what am I? Who am I? Does what I do matter? Am I a man? These are questions every boy asked his father. Maybe not always verbally, but he is asking. These are questions engraved in the heart of every man. And I believe today, more than any time, for too many of us, these questions have been left unanswered. Hello, Mandalore here. I believe there is a serious lack of affirmation and approval from fathers today. We talk about the absent father and how detrimental that is on children. And as they love to say, the science is settled on this subject. It, it quite literally is. It's very clear how bad it is for children to not have a father. But almost as impactful in different ways is the father who is unhealthy or not really present or lacking in emotional connection with his children. This seriously impacts boys because their understanding of what it is to be a man and their self-identity rests first in their father. And if he doesn't actively work through us through, as boys, through that process, through the rites of passage from boyhood to manhood, we will continually wonder. We see in many traditional cu uh, cultures that they have very obvious literal rites of passage, some kind of ceremony or there's a some kind of task the boy has to complete. And until then, he is not recognized as a man, and there's often very obvious signs of this transition, like perhaps he won't be allowed to grow a beard yet, or there's certain types of clothing he's not allowed to wear. And this is just representing the very real biological, spiritual, emotional, mental imperative and need of boys from their fathers for affirmation of their manhood. We need that approval, that permission that we are men, that we are allowed to practice and display the masculine traits of manhood that are particular to our gender, such as strength, assertiveness, aggression, leadership, sacrifice, endurance, etc. And when we don't have that from our fathers, whether completely or in some varying degree of inconsistency, it causes us to struggle in all sorts of areas of our life. One example of this is that a father instills in his children their first understanding and image of God. It's no accident that God has chosen a lot of symbolism and verbiage of fatherhood and how he relates to us. And so it causes men to question God when their father doesn't model this and affirm them. Because if their earthly father couldn't love them, will their heavenly father, will he accept us? We wonder. Additionally, it causes us to question our sexuality. Because our fathers exhibit for us what it is to be a man, what it is to be a husband, and what it is to be a father. And so they are modeling what it is to love a woman, 
and for girls, what it is to be loved by a man. It's if you notice that many women will pursue men that share attributes of their father. It's very common because of this, because that was the standard set by their father for good or for ill. Just as our fathers instill that image of God for good or for ill. And by not being there, not affirming our manhood, we question ourselves sexually, which leaves us vulnerable to slipping into various sorts of hedonism, such as with pornography, because we struggle to understand a healthy, balanced way of connecting with women and relating connecting emotionally through communication and what it means to share life with a woman and so there and besides that by not being affirmed in our manhood in our identity as a man we many men will have a desperate need to connect to men because they didn't have that connection with their father and it often will bleed into all their relationships with other boys and men and so so oftentimes they'll struggle to develop friendships with other men and connect with other men and it can and it ha- I have uh, come across many men in conversation who have said that this desperation to connect two men to have that approval they never got from their father leads them to get onto websites and apps for homosexuals just because they know those men will give them attention and we can you know it's very obvious where this could lead a boy or a man if he is feeling that desperate and unsure of himself and who he is and what he is and it's been my experience, my wife's, and numerous professionals I've heard speak on the subject that they don't know a homosexual who has had a healthy, balanced relationship with his father. And I don't think that's an accident. Now, it's not to say that this, there are no other factors. There are. But I think that it sets up a boy to be more vulnerable to those other factors and to the other pressures and influence because, of course, especially today, that acceptance and idea of homosexuality, of transgenderism, of all these other forms of degeneracy are promoted and pushed constantly in media, education, like government and entertainment. And that's very confusing to a boy or a man who is not sure of his his identity, of his self-worth, of what it means even to be a man or a husband or a lover or a friend. And so they, they don't understand how these different relationships work and what it, how to connect in a healthy, balanced way as a friend, as a a lover, etc. So it sets them up for a lot of trouble and struggle. Another way that it affects us, because we question and are unsure of our identity, we're unsure of our self-worth. Does anything we do matter? And it makes it hard for us to set goals, to look out at the horizon, at the world, and pursue those goals, setting out on our path of purpose and meaning, and fulfill our mission, regardless of what stands in front of us, overcoming those challenges and those roadblocks, regardless of what others may think or who may be offended to step out 
as men and lead and press forward. Because that's part of what we are supposed to do and be as men. But if we're not sure in ourselves, how can we take bold steps? How can we stand alone when we are unsure of ourselves? When we can't even stand in ourselves? That's not to say that we are just doomed and can't be anything or do anything. We certainly can. We can grow. We can heal. As God repeatedly says, that he will be our father. But it makes it it makes the road more difficult. It means we have to learn more through trial and error rather than by lesson and example. Which means it's important to connect with other men. Because our fathers fall short in different ways. So maybe one guy's father was a workaholic. Another guy was emotionally absent. Another guy was just all over the place and inconsistent. And together you can help encourage each other and affirm each other because that matters as well. You know, nothing can replace our biological fathers. We have a special place within us just for our biological father. And even if we have no relationship or a terrible relationship with our father, we find ourselves hurt or grieving if they do something bad or when they die. And we can wonder why, and this is why. No one can replace the biological father. And I'm not degrading you men who have stepped up to take care of children who are not yours. Because just because you can't be that 110% of the biological, that the biological father had, you can still be 100% father to those children or uncle or mentor or whatever the case may be. You can still have a vital, important impact in their life. That's something I think about constantly with my nieces and nephews and any children or young men that I come in contact with because we can be what they need. We can still have a great influence on them. It's just we can't undo hurts that have already been done in the past. They can heal from them, but we can't just erase them 100%. But by being there, we give them a point of surety. They know that someone does love them, that someone does approve of them, and children in general need this desperately. And even if they have crappy parents, if you can be that point for them, that can make all the difference in the world because children need a sense of surety and security in their life. So while there is not, no one doing the shortcomings and scars that the failures of our fathers may have inflicted on us, it doesn't mean that it determines our life 100%. They will be there. We will bear those scars. But we can heal. We can become functional men, husbands and fathers, mentors, brothers, friends, etc. And we can live full, fulfilling lives if we choose to press forward, to find in God and brotherhood and marriage and family, that purpose and meaning that we were meant to have and meant to have been instilled. And through that, we can find that affirmation. And we can also look at history and see our forefathers smiling back at us. You are a man. Stand strong.